All right, now let's go to question number 11. That will begin section 2, where more than one option may be correct. Two non-conducting solid spheres of radii R and 2R. So it is there, radii R and radii 2R. Having uniform volume charge densities, rho 1 and rho 2 touch each other. So this has density rho 1, this has density rho 2. Net electric field at a distance 2R from the center of smaller sphere. So that means that point can either be here at a distance 2R or that point could be here at a distance 2R from the center along the line joining the centers of the sphere. And we have to calculate rho 1 by rho 2 if either at this point 2R from the smaller center or 2R from this center electric field is 0 we got to calculate rho 1 by rho 2. So first situation if both are positive then in that situation you would get electric field would be 0 at this point so let me call that point as N where is the null point electric field due to 1 would be equals to electric field due to 2 due to the first sphere due to the second sphere the point is outside the smaller sphere so E1 would be K Q1 divided by 2R square this distance is 2R and that electric field would be equals to the electric field due to the larger sphere Quite obviously, this distance is R. And electric field inside, that's rho 2 R divided by 3 epsilon naught. Where K is 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught. So when both the charges are positive, you're going to get answer as option number D. Then let's even verify the situation when one charge is negative and other charge is positive. In that situation, the next point is here. And that distance from the center of the smaller sphere, let me make a new figure for that. Here it is 0. That means at a distance 2R from the center of smaller sphere. So if electric field at this point is 0, quite obviously, K rho 1 into 4 by 3 pi r cube divided by distance from the center square to r square would be equals to k rho 2 4 by 3 pi r 2 cube divided by distance from the center of larger sphere that's quite obviously 2R plus additional 3R, that's going to give 5R square. And you could see that one charge would be negative, another charge would be positive. And when you solve this, you're going to get the ratio of 32 by 25. So one null point here, in between other null point somewhere here. So that was for question number 11. Now let's go to question number 12. The question being framed from mechanical wave and standing wave. Horizontal stretched string fixed at 2N is vibrating in its fifth harmonic. And based on that, the first is the number of node. Well, if it is fifth harmonic, the number of node has to be 6. Because the first harmonic gives two nodes and so on. So first option is incorrect. And you could also say that if it is in the fifth harmonic, 5 lambda by 2 would be equals to L. And now, lambda can be brought from this data because sine kx, k has been given as 62.8. So that will be 5 by 2 into 2 pi by 62.8 equals to L and putting that you would get length of the string is 0 0.25 meter 
And when the string is in the fifth harmonic, quite obviously, the midpoint of the string would be antinode and the maximum displacement would be the same thing. So quite obviously, that is 0 0.01 meter. It is in the fifth harmonic. So this frequency is corresponding to fifth harmonic. And if I put 6 to 8 equals to 2 pi f, I'm going to get f as 100 hertz. But this is the frequency corresponding to fifth. And the fourth option says the same 100 hertz is the fundamental frequency, which would obviously be incorrect. So the correct answer would be option number B and option number C. Now let's go to the next question. Let's proceed now. Question number 13 from electrostatic capacitor. In the circuit shown, each capacitor has capacitance C. S1 is pressed fully to charge. So you could see S1 is pressed to fully charge C1. And it says S2 is then pressed to charge C2. S1 is released and S2 is pressed to charge C2. And after some time, S2 is released and S3 is pressed. So the situation is first, this is pressed, this released, and this is pressed, this released, and this pressed. Let's see. Charge on the upper plate of C1 is 2Cv0. That would be false. Because when S1 is pressed, the upper plate will have a charge 2Cv0. But then... When S2 is pressed, C1 and C2 would complete the circuit, they would share. So finally, they would have equal charge. So the charge on the upper plate would be C, V0 each. So therefore, second option would be correct. And finally, whatever be the charge on C2, it is connected to a battery, the source of constant potential difference. So the upper plate will have minus C, V0, lower plate will have plus C, V0. So Option number D would be correct. So this one will give answer B and D. Let's go to question number 14, which is from magnetism. Particle of mass M and positive charge Q is moving with 4i cap. That's a velocity, initial velocity 4 along x enters a region of uniform magnetic field normal to xy plane and magnetic field extends from x equals to 0 to x equals to L and for all value of y that means the magnetic field is either inside or outside initial velocity is in this direction and that's 4 meter per second after passing this region, particle emerges on other side after 10 millisecond with velocity 2 root 3 i cap plus j cap. Notice the velocity has some component in x, some component in y. It means finally it has to go in this way. That's the only condition which suffices positive value of x velocity as well as positive value of y velocity. And the angle this makes with x-axis, you could see that, is quite obviously tan theta is 1 divided by root 3. So that has to be equals to 30 degree or pi by 6 based on this value. Now the first option says magnetic field is in negative z direction. That has to be true. Because if we take this as x and if we take this as y, z-axis has to be outside. But look at the deviation and applying Fleming's left-hand rule, it says magnetic field has to be inside, that is cross. And that means magnetic field has to be in the negative z-direction. And for option number d, that magnitude of the field is 
50 pi m by 3 q or 100 pi m by 3 q. We got to find the magnitude of magnetic field. To do that, we could easily find in this way. You could see that the total deviation in the magnetic field is pi by 6. That means, quite obviously, it would be taking the total time of t by 12. And this t by 12 is given as 10 millisecond. So quite obviously, time period, we could use the formula 2 pi m upon b q equals to 10 raised to the power minus 2. And on solving that, you will land up with option number C. So this question will have correct answer as A and C. So now we'll proceed to question number 15 and so on.